<laughs> well, good afternoon to everybody. And uh, it is so very, very nice to uh, welcome all of you here again. And it's absolutely wonderful to welcome Thelma. And we hope that the uh, uh, sound system there will behave. Uh, it has been causing a little bit of extra noise, and I'm not really sure why, it's because I'm not, it, it has a cold. That's <laughs> right. We hope it won't get the flu. So anyway, I'm uh, very happy to welcome Thelma. Thank you, Father. Or actually, she has welcomed almost all of us here. How long have you been here, Thelma? I've been here as a resident for 15 years. 15 years. Actually, 16 now. 16. I 16 forget how years the months now. go by. <laughs> time, tra time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> OK. Well, let's kind of go back to um, the beginning, which, uh, at least for you, uh, was August 29th, 1926. Correct. That you were born, and where were you born? Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska. Yay. Who's, who, who here is that? from Omaha? Oh, okay. That's close. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. Okay, so, no and, but you didn't stay long in Omaha. No, moved out when I was two. Okay, do you remember the move? No. You don't remember the move. You just remember being out here. Yes. Okay, and then, uh, let me see, uh, Bill came along. Pardon? Bill came along. Yes, my brother, 17 months 17 after 17 months me. after you. Right. And he, uh, so that was, uh, he was born out here or back there? Back there. Back there, okay. So your, uh, your parents moved out with two, with little, with two little ones, a yes. toddler and a baby. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and was it an exciting trip? Do, do, have they told you stories about that trip? No. No, okay. So what happened once you got here? Where did you settle in? Uh, we settled um, in Los Angeles. Um, my father was uh, managing a Richfield. I don't know how many people remembered Richfield uh, stations. But anyway, he managed one of their uh, stations. And our place of living was just across the little lot there. So it was very convenient. Mm -hmm. In what part of Los Angeles? Uh, Vermont and Slauson, probably. Vermont and Slauson, OK. Uh, and I, I have very fond memories when I was little of going down to the downtown Central Library, and right across the street from it was the Atlantic Richfield Building. Oh. A very, very classy uh, Art Deco building that they since demolished and built a big tower. But uh, so let me see. Uh, any stories out of your school and childhood that you would like to share with us? Well, <coughs> they always thought I was a pretty well-behaved child. But around four, I just... What happened to you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, I discovered matches. Oh, OK. Yeah, I discovered Tell us ma about the match. Well, incident. I had a whole box of matches that you struck on the outside, you know, and then you could blow them out and watch them. And so I just thought that was great fun. And my mom was in the house, so it's not like she wasn't taking care of me, but she didn't know what I was doing. So I took the box of matches and I lit them one at a time, blew them out and just put them around me. And not thinking that my mom would come out eventually and find out what I've been doing. And mm -hmm. with that, she took me in the house, she lit the stove, and she took my finger and she put it as close as she could without burning me, but at least being uncomfortable, to explain to me that that's what would happen had I done that with that match. So that mm -hmm. was my introduction to flame. <laughs> so you must have left at least a couple of matches in the box so that she could light the stove. Well, no, she probably had another box somewhere, oh, she had but another anyway. Box. <laughs> Those were the days. How many remember the days when you had to light your stove with a match? 
Yeah. Actually, I remember that too. <laughs> so, uh, anything about uh, grade school or high school that really stands out for you? Yeah, let's see, grade school. <laughs> I'm laughing because one of the funny things that happens, which was a no-no, um, in our girls' restroom, they had rows like this of, of uh, toilets. And at the top, of course, in each row was a roof that, you know, took care of everything. And so a friend of mine decided that we would climb up to the top <laughs> and explore what was up on top. Mm -hmm. and, and in the process, the um, holder that was holding the toilet paper was metal, and it opened on me and gave me a big gouge in my leg. And I, all I could think of doing was just sitting on the floor and saying, whoa, Bill, whoa, Bill. How many of you remember whoa, Bill? It said every time you started to cry, say whoa, Bill, and you would stop crying. Well, it didn't mm -hmm. happen. Anyway, it, finally, I have a huge scar as a result of that. So. Oh, my. <laughs> so that was, that was your no, early no. exploration days. Yes. Um, matches and, and exploring the roof of the restroom. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, and you, what, what did you like about high school? Besides boys. <laughs> you know, at that time, I really didn't like boys. That yeah, sounds strange, but I didn't. Um, what did I like about? I liked my friends, my girlfriends. There were about five of us that chummed together. And believe it or not, two of us were my height, and the rest were tall. So we looked very funny chumming around school together. Mm -hmm. Three tall girls and three, two short ones. <laughs> but anyway, we had a great time together, mm -hmm. yeah. And then somebody named Tommy came into your life. Tell us about him and tell us about that event. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I happen to have been friend with my husband's brother's girlfriend. And I was at their house and they decided that we should go over to the boyfriend, I'll call him Walt because that was his name, that was my husband's brother. And we went over there and we met Mama. And um, while we were in the living room, uh, Walt excused himself and left me in the living room by myself. And I could hear this conversation going on in the restroom. And he was saying, well, it said it won't take you very long to take her home. And he says, but I've got a date. And, and he says, oh, but you can still take the date and, and take her home. It won't take you long. And so I heard all this conversation, of course. So they decided that he would take me home. And so we get in the car. And he's the one that didn't want to take me home. And that's Tommy. And um, he said, well, he says, do you have to go home right away? How about that? <laughs> he had another date, but he was asking me if I had to go home right away. So anyway, I said, well, not exactly. What did you have in mind? And he said, well, we said there's a place called the Zamboanga. Does anybody know the Zamboanga on Crenshaw Boulevard? <laughs> no, but Sla uh, Slauson, Florence, Manchester, Florence, nope. going this way. <laughs> anyway, that's where we ended up. And um, he said, uh, what would you like to drink? And of course, he did not know that I was a teetotaler, but I was willing you know, to go here with him. And uh, so he, he said, what would you like? And I said, well, I'd like a plain seven up. And he says, well, don't you mean a uh, seven high? And I said, what's a seven high? And he says, well, it's got a little liquor in it. And I said, no, I want a plain seven up. So he brought me, this, they brought me the seven up. And then he said to me, he said, can you balance an Indian head nickel on the edge of a glass? And I said, oh, I don't know. So I got the Indian head nickel out, put it on there, and after dirtying about three tablecloths, the waitress had to come and change it, I don't know how many times, I finally did it. So it's possible to do that. Anyway, that was my first experience as a nightclub. <laughs> okay. I presume because of subsequent history, 
that there was a second date also. By, uh, by the way, whatever happened to that date that he had scheduled? Was she oh, stood I didn't up? I didn't ask. Well, are you kidding? He you went didn't summer. ask. Well, okay. <laughs> I went home early. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, but I presume there was a second date. Oh, yes. And, uh, and then the rest is history. Yeah. Yeah. So how long did you date before you got married? About a year. About a year. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a nice length of time. Mm -hmm. You kind of get to get to know whether you were right for each other. That's right. And apparently, it turned out that you were right for each other. That's right. Even though he was Catholic and I'm non-Catholic, but that didn't matter to me, and it didn't matter to him. So we made our marriage work by each of us still attending our own religions. And it worked very well. So, <laughs> so what? And I'm still here as a Catholic. <laughs> so, did you formally become Catholic or no, informally? No, informally. There, uh, I I recall the story when uh, one time Bob Hope was uh, interviewed, and he, uh, of course, he was not Catholic. Married to Dolores, Dolores Hope was a daily communicant there yeah. at. Uh, at St. Charles in North Hollywood. And the interviewer on, on the TV asked him, you know, what's it like being married to a Catholic? And he said, well, when you're married to a Catholic, you're a Catholic whether you want to be or not. <laughs> well, I'll have to tell you, I kind of twisted it around a little bit, even though I, weren't Catholic, I wasn't Catholic, my husband was not a good attender. And so, ah. <laughs> and so I kind of, um, little when it came to be, um, Easter and Christmas and New Year's and and uh, those types of uh, occasions. He went. To, we went to church twice. We would go to whichever was easiest for us to do first. Of course, ours was a scheduled time, so we would go to to um, church services twice during the holidays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what was your church? My church was considered a non-denominational church. Oh, okay. I don't know if you're familiar with that oh, or yes. not. Okay. Oh, yes, we are. Good. All right. So uh, where did you get married? Got married at, uh, where did I get married? <laughs> you got a picture there. <laughs> yeah, you, it's at, at um, Sixth and Commonwealth. Big church there. Big church, okay. Uh, First Congregational First Church. First Congregational. Yeah, at okay. Sixth and Commonwealth. Okay. Yeah, that still is there. Yeah, right? they, had, they had a beautiful chapel, yeah. almost like, a, like our church is. Their chapel mm -hmm. is. I can remember in the past, they were rather famous for organ concerts. Oh, there. yes, um, yes. Yeah. yeah, very good. So, um, Tell us about uh, your married life, and uh, some children came along. Yes. Whom you're very proud of. Yes, I am. <laughs> so, how many children? Do you have? Two. Two. I have okay. two. I have a daughter, uh, who is the oldest, and then I have a son who is here with me today, and he's three years younger. Mm-hmm. So. And you also have another sister who. I uh, do. Who. Um, how would I say there's an interesting age variance? Yes, there, there. is. Um, there's 21 years difference between my sister and I. And so when I found out that my mother was pregnant with her, I was, just, I was thrilled to death. And I told my mother-in-law, and my mother-in-law thought that was, you know, just great. And my mom wasn't too sure, because <laughs> at that time she was 42. So... <laughs> But she was turned out to be the really blessing of our family. Just a wonderful, wonderful girl. Okay. Well, that uh, that 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 sounds very unique. You must have had some very good uh, times and experiences together with your sister, who was uh, Cheryl, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anything you can tell us? Any fun stories of? Well, of your life with your <coughs> sister who is young enough to be your also. daughter. And I have a brother You have also. a brother who is older. Right. Oh, no, he's no. younger, I'm sorry. Yeah, older he's 17 than. months younger. But he was off to the, uh, what is it, the Korean, was it Korean or? There was some war yeah. going on and he was yeah. off over there. Um, I was going to say something now about my sister. 
you know that mind, how it happens, it kind of fleets away. <laughs> we have all had that experience. <laughs> we here know exactly the Funny. panic that it induces. I, I know now what I was going to say. My sister and I never lived together, but we've always been very, very close. And so I went to visit her. She lives in Arkansas. And I went to visit her for a few weeks, and I put my purse on her couch. And, uh, but I thought I had taken it, and I, I mean, I put it in the bedroom. But when I came back out, I noticed that the, the purse was on the couch. And I said, um, I thought I put that in the bedroom. She said, oh, she said, it, you did. She said, that's my purse. I said, wait a minute. I went and got my purse. I bought mine out here. She bought hers back there. Exactly identical. Mm. <laughs> and there were many times when that would happen, that we would mm. pick up something, and we'd end up picking up the same thing. So One of you was channeling the other. Huh? Yes. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. So you were kind of a stay-at-home mom, right? When during well, your when the kids were little, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And then I went to work at, um, um, at a religious bookstore. You may have even known an A&M Marcus on West Boulevard. Oh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, um, as time went on and my husband became to the point where he could no longer work on a job, um, he became the stay-at-home mom. And I found work at USC. At, uh, in their gold department. And when I saw that in the paper, I thought, what in the world is the gold department? And because I was a dental assistant, it was not too unfamiliar with me with the gold business. And so when I went to apply for the job, come to find out, it had to do with distributing the gold and the wire and the different types of gold that the students would be using during their learning process. And so that's what I ended up doing there. Okay. I was a dental assistant, too. Okay. And uh, I presume that you had to be very careful that whatever gold was loaned out had to be carefully returned. Yes. Each student had a... Um, double... What do I want to say, Father? Double... Du you know, it's duplex. got... It, it's got Oh, this is terrible. I'm so embarrassed. Carbon paper. Carbon or? paper. Okay. Yes. It had carbon paper between the top and the bottom. And the student would fill it out. They would tell me what they were going to uh, cast. And if they told me they were going to do a gold crown, then I would ask them what kind of gold would they be using. And um, so then they would tell me, and then I would decide that they needed six penny weights of this gold or six penny weights of this. When they cast it up and did it, they had to bring it back to me. I had to weigh it to make sure that they used all the gold that I had given them. And then I'd stamp it, put down the weight, and then they would go away, cut the sprue off, and bring that back to me. So that was that. So. Go foil did also. You, did you primarily get the job because of your skills or because of your honesty? Oh, well, I think the only thing that got me the job because I was supposed to be able to type. I couldn't type two pages mm. or one page. But anyway, that, that requires you to take the test, so I did. And uh, they hired me. Well, it wasn't my skills, but I think it's because I had been associated in the dental field where I was uh, familiar with terminology. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's one oh. of the reasons why I got the job. Because the gold was primarily used in the dental school? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, um, did you ever have to uh, blow the whistle on somebody who, couldn't, who didn't account for all of the gold that they took out? And well, that came when it came time for them to um, graduate from the class. And so I had to, to, to sign their final say-so that everything is all up and up with me. Uh -huh. And um, so when that happened, they would have to go down to the bookstore, and whatever amount I said was missing, they had to make up that in money hmm. and pay for it. So. So, so we now find out that there is a little bit more behind the dental degree than most of us realize. Oh, that, there's uh, a lot. 
That that's quite interesting. Yeah. Now you also had uh, uh, a a bit of a career in creative cooking and uh, recipes. Uh, <gasps> oh no, Father, you're not going to tell that. <laughs> I could if you don't. <laughs> when I was newly married, <clears throat> I was, I've always been a stickler for following things in order. And so I came across this recipe I was going to make, this newly married, and I came across this recipe that listed flour and sugar and butter or margarine and then a strong coffee and then this and that and the other thing. So I got down to the strong coffee part of it, and I thought, I've been measuring half all a cup, the right? yeah half a cup. Mm -hmm. um, I, so I've been measuring all these dry ingredients. I, I wonder if that's what they mean. So I thought, well, I don't know if my coffee's strong or not. So I added a few more grounds, and I used that instead of using the strong coffee that they meant was already made. But I used the grounds instead, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I baked it. Took it over to my in-laws. We lived across the street uh, for a dessert, and my father-in-law wore dentures. And so I said to him, I said he had his cake, and I said, Papa, I said, how did you like the cake? And he says, Well, because he got up in the in in the between between eating his cake, he got up and went to the bathroom and rinsed his dentures, which I knew what he was doing, but nobody else knew. And so he came back, and I says, Papa, I, I was dying laughing. I said, what, what, how did you like the cake? And he said, well, it was OK, but what are those dark brown things in there? <laughs> of course, that was the coffee grounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I did receive a huge um, Westinghouse. You were on a TV show. Yeah, I was on a TV show. My sister-in-law turned me in <laughs> to a TV show for having a half a cup of strong coffee. And they ran up, and it could be you was the program. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that or not. But anyway, <clears throat> they came running up the aisle and said, this could be you. Anybody for half a cup of strong coffee? And I sat there for a minute, and I thought, oh, no. My, my sister-in-law, she turned me in. So anyway, that's how <laughs> the strong coffee got involved. <laughs> and I got a beautiful prize. All right. <laughs> So what brought you to Nazareth House? My sweet, wonderful mother-in-law. She came here with the Catholic daughters way back in the early 80s. And she came back home and she said, when I have to go somewhere, she said, this is where I want to come. And at that time, it was a lot different than it is now because there were two grown-ups to a single room that you now have. So they each shared a bed and they each had a closet. So maybe some of the rooms that you're in might have a double door. Those were rooms that were two people slept at one time. And um, so she's the one that started me here. And um, then my mother came here and uh, my mother was not Catholic. And I remember Mother Malachi, I don't know if you remember her or not, but anyway, Mother Malachi says, well, she says, uh, this is going to be your room. And my mother put her hands on her hips like this. And she says, well, she says, you know I'm not Catholic. And Mother Malachi says, well, she said, we're just going to have to do something about that. We're going to have to, uh, how did she word that? We'll have to sprinkle you. That's what it was. Well, <laughs> we'll have to sprinkle her. <laughs> so anyway, they got along fine. And my mother loved it here. So. Mm -hmm. And you've been here, what you say, 15 or 16 more? 16 years. 16 years, 16 years. So you are one of the real old timers in our current population. Is that right? Let's see, I think uh, uh, Armand was right around your time. Yes, and I think Annette also and was think Annette. almost around my time. Yeah. So, uh, but those are the only two that mm -hmm. I remember. So in your time here, what do you have to say about Nazareth House, and are there any, are there any good stories you can tell? You've told a few out of school and out of your family <laughs> life. Well, how about out of uh, Nazareth? I really can't tell anything funny right now that I can think of because at the table I sit at, as you well know, are a lot of people, and we do get silly, 
and we say and do a lot of funny things. So right now I can't think of anything. Okay. Anybody <laughs> here from that table want to uh, <laughs> tell something of, of Thelma? <laughs> and they are all silent. Okay. <laughs> well, well, somebody's got their hand up. Oh, sister, of course. Well, sister Jean Marie. I'm not from that table anymore, but Thelma, you forgot all about the dancing. The dancing, Sister Jean Marie says. Thelma, the dancing. What dancing? When you danced with that group and you went over during the war to entertain the boys. You entertained the boys during the war, dancing. Oh, no. <laughs> oh <laughs> tell us about that. You put that out of your mind. Oh, you've got a memory that won't quit. <laughs> Okay. When I was in, it was when I was in my late teens. You entertained the troops. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, I belonged to a dance studio. Took lessons from them for ye from years, and then they were making a trip over to San Clemente Island, which was a naval base at that time, and uh, we all went over on a B-52 bomber. Never been on a plane before in my life. That was great. And then I had to put my my mess tray and the mess stuff, you know, clean it off. It was, it was, it was fun. <laughs> anyway, it was a great, great trip and I enjoyed that. Good. Uh, anybody else want to ask uh, Thelma a question or two to uh, keep her honest? <laughs> okay, sister again. What about the volleyball? The volleyball. Well, okay. I played volleyball until I came here, and uh, that was 75 years old. And um, I never played volleyball in school, but um, after my first child came, they had a class at night for exercising and then afterwards volleyball. Well, that just did it for me because I went for exercise and then played volleyball, and from then on, I played every week and got with a group that uh, we always got together and played at Westchester Playground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, very good. Ethel. Thelma, what about the crosses you used to make for Holy Week? <gasps> oh, do you know okay. about those? Uh, tell me about them. <laughs> you don't know about them. <laughs> well, before I even became a resident here, Sister Celine, bless her heart, uh, asked me if I would help her make some crosses. And I didn't know the first thing about what she was talking, but anyway, you take palms and you bend them a certain way and you end up having a lovely cross after it. Mm -hmm. And so she asked me if I would be willing to make some for Easter Sunday, for Palm Sunday. And so I said, sure. So I started making those at home before I be ever became a resident here. And after I came here, it, ju it just continued. But now they're not doing it anymore. So, and I don't know that my fingers would allow me to do it, but it was fun. And I, a lot of ladies here uh, used to help me do that too. Okay. Um, well, we're coming upon a half hour. All right. So do you have any parting shots, any, anything that just came to your mind that you might like to share? Well, I would just like to share that I would, I don't know of another place that I would rather be than to be here at Nazareth House and with all of you wonderful people. I have lived here for 15, 16 years, and I have yet to have a crossword with a single person here. And I think that's a, a good tribute to the institution. <laughs> so. And, and I love tribute. all of you. And a good tribute to everybody else here. And more yes. than that, I think, a good tribute to your personal uh, equanimity and what medication are you on to keep you nice and pleasant? <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Tracy? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ethel, one more. One more. This will be the last. Thelma, you shared with me something at breakfast today about the adoption of your son and what you told him and you told your family the most important thing to you it was honesty and something else and I forgot what it was do you remember I think it was honesty and a caring person yeah 
because I couldn't ask for a more caring son and honest son than what I have to this day. I am so proud of him, and I have a daughter also that I'm proud of. She does a lot of traveling, and so therefore she misses out on, the, on a lot of these things. But my son is my stay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, you'll have to send her the link to uh, this interview on YouTube, so oh, she can okay. watch it very, Good. very proudly. <laughs> I'll give it. I'll give it to you all. Okay. And we have some. Um, pictures and booklets from out of the past. Yeah. Some of them look a little bit time-worn, <laughs> but could you tell us just very briefly what sort of things you uh, selected to share with us? Well, I'll have to get up and look. <laughs> On this end, I have my cradle roll when I was entered into the church when I was born. They always had a uh, certificate that they gave to the new mothers, and uh, so I have that. And I also have a, um, a baby's book that's here. And I have my wedding pictures, and I have my wedding Let's book. See. And I have my high school, which Dan was, Dan, are you here? No, he's not here. Anyway, Dan, I don't know if he's from Australia or what, but anyway, Anzacs is um, mm -hmm. the name that the Army used in, in Australia. And when, we were, when I was in high school, we chose that because it was wartime, we chose that as our uh, symbol. And so we were the Anzacs. And then I have my high school diploma, and this is my, now you, you think I'm always prim and proper. You see, I do have two hippie children. Can you see that? <laughs> I love this out of all the pictures that I have. Tracy's first friend, made this for me, a girlfriend, I should say, and she did the woodwork and all, burned it, and did all, burned the edge and all that and put it together for me, and I have just loved this picture. So that's my, that's how my children look going through high school. <laughs> okay, and we have a few certificates there of one um, sort or another. Well, this Oh, this is my high school picture and diploma. Where was it? Pardon? Where was it? Where was it? Manual Arts High School. Manual Arts. All right. And this is my wedding pictures, some wedding book, and that's it. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Thelma, thank you so very much, and. Uh, God bless you, and may we, may we enjoy your company here for many more years. I hope so. All right. God Thank bless you. you. Thank, Thank you. all of you. I love you as friends. It's wonderful.